Thank Can you. I, Sorry. Um, I think the issue is that the core of this is that are you going to prevent somebody who is addicted to something who wants to crack that addiction to be able to use something that supports them in a public place? Mm. That, that, for me, is the fundamental question that you are all uh, grappling with. The other things can be dealt with the marketing, the awareness, the understanding, the stopping our youngsters smoking. But our 20 to 35, our pregnant mums stopping smoking is, is all an issue. Mm. But the crux of this debate is if you consider the number of deaths every year by people who continue to smoke in Wales against doing something where there is evidence to show that it helps them possibly to live longer if they can smoke these things and lead a normal life, which means going into public places, then it's a good thing versus, I come back to your comment on obesity, mm -hmm. RCP will shortly produce a report about the paucity of obesity services in Wales. Sugar, all of those other things. Um, we know there's evidence there. We know there's evidence that these things stop people smoking. It takes longer, but it does stop them because of the appeal. The appeal that they enable them to continue the behavioral process without harming themselves or harming others in the same way. And that, everything else that I, I've heard is, is, can be managed in different ways. But the fundamental question for this bill, for part two, is are you going to put somebody who's trying to give up an addiction into a situation where it's really hard for them to do that? I think the point I'd say is, you know, has said that these are relatively new products, and I, we acknowledge that, and there will be an accumulation of evidence as time goes by. And unless and until that evidence is compelling, it seems to me rational to delay any you, legislation. You, you've made that point several mm. times, Dr. East, so I, I mm. accept that. John? Yeah, in terms of um, what you then Beverly, described as the crux of the matter, um, you know, are we in danger of doing something that will hinder the, um, the switch from smoking um, tobacco products to e-cigarettes. Um, you know, as other members of this committee have, have just said, obviously we're not talking about a total ban on e-cigarettes, we're talking about a restriction that will put them in the same position as tobacco products. It seems to me that two of the main drivers for people making the switch from tobacco products to e-cigarettes are the health benefits, the fact that e-cigarettes are far less damaging to health than tobacco products, and financial um, aspects, they're, they're far, e cigarettes are far cheaper. Those drivers will still be in place if um, there is a restriction on use of e cigarettes in public places. And um, you know, it seems to me that um, in general, smokers must realize that um, the health benefits will be very substantial you know, if they make the switch and it will save them a lot of money. And those two essential drivers are not going to be um, adversely affected um, by a ban on uh, e-cigarettes in, in enclosed public places. Well, there's a presumption, of course, that this, this is the fiscal driver. I, I, I don't accept that. And most people who want to give up smoking uh, want to give up smoking for a variety of reasons. I mean, the, the, the corollary of that is as you put more tax up on cigarettes over the last three or four decades, uh, less people smoke. It's not necessarily true. So I don't accept that it's a fiscal driver to switch from one to the other. It's the majority of cases people generally want to give up smoking for a variety of reasons. But I don't think a fiscal driver is the main one. They want to live healthier. They, they recognize, most smokers recognize it's not a good thing to smoke, but they find it difficult to give up smoking. And that's a very complex change. And to reduce it to a binary set of drivers, I don't think is justified. So you, you wouldn't accept that, um, you know, that the health benefit, you mentioned the financial um, incentives or, or not, if, if you don't accept that they exist. But I'm not saying they don't exist. I think, I'm saying it's a very complex uh, coalition of things that want people to give up smoking. And it's not that financial drivers are not the main things in my experience. Well, but you would accept then that the health benefits are the a health major benefits, driver. Yes, yes. And those benefits would still be there for, um, as a result of making that switch, um, even if those products, those e-cigarettes, couldn't be used in, in closed public places. 
why shouldn't they be used in closed public places? That's the question I'm asking you. Why shouldn't they be used in closed public places? Well, there are a variety of possible reasons which have been, which have been touched upon normalisation. Um, but there's no evidence know, for that. So that's the point. I well, think, I, I think we've got those points. Well, can I just say, Chair, I think you know, there is a dearth of evidence because um, they're fairly newest products, which you know, we, we've, um, we've covered. But um, my essential point is, I think, that people who smoke um, cigarettes, by and large, an awful lot of them realise that um, it's damaging to their health, very damaging to their health, and that e-cigarettes, making a switch to e-cigarettes, would be very beneficial to their health. Surely that's uh, a driver, that um, drive for better health is going to still be there um, if a change is made in terms well, of this proposed legislation. You demonising them in the public place and marginalising them. They have to go with the smokers outside of the pub to do that. You could say that that is inhibiting the process of switching from smoking to e-cigarettes. You could argue that's opinion, that's your opinion, where's the evidence? Well, that's the point. Well, I think another point is, Chair, if I may, that if there is no evidence either way, then that's when we talk about the precautionary uh, approach and how it might apply. And uh, I think we've heard already from the BMA that um, one of the dangers is that uh, if we do allow um, e-cigarettes to develop to the stage where perhaps they have, to some extent, renormalised um, the smoking of tobacco and um, created a new addiction to nicotine, then, uh, you know, as a gateway to smoking tobacco products, it would take an awful long time to undo that harm. Uh, I think 60 years was um, mentioned by the BMA in terms of how long it took from general understanding of the health um, damage of um, tobacco products to get into a position where we did something serious about it. Again, I think you're conflating tobacco products with this product, and I, and I don't think that is justified with the evidence at present. Now, you, we all know why tobacco was pushed in the 20th century and the suppression of evidence in the 1950s and the aggressive marketing of cigarettes and how we changed society in a big way. Yes, it took many decades to reverse that. But I think you can control the use of these products without necessarily, uh, by stopping their promoting in many other ways, without necessarily banning them in public places. And that's the point. Don't conflate the two products. They're not equivalent. I can take it from the point you view, to clarify the point. Your views at the moment are that the reduction in harm outweighs the precautionary yes. approach? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Lindsay? I just wanted to further that just, just a tad. Uh, I mean, my, my mother uh, smoked because she told me all the film stars in, in the 1930s uh, and 40s smoked, so she thought it was, it was a good thing. Um, I must say I've never smoked, so I, do, I don't know the experience. But um, I, I think that uh, the talk of banning e-cigarettes is getting a little silly now. I mean, I understand that some councils are banning smoking on beaches. Well, if you're on Seven Mile Pendine with a southeast uh, wind, uh, I, I can't see that af affecting many people. I mean, will we be banning um, e-cigarettes at the top of Penavan? Well, if you can get to the top of Penavan, I think you might deserve a cigarette. I don't know, but um, I mean, uh, are you of the opinion it's, it's actually... to get to the top of Penavan is... <laughs> Don't, don't deter him. Yeah, I, I, are, you, are you of the opinion that, that it is getting silly and we are driving people back to smoking? That's, that's what I'm concerned of. I, I, I think this, this bill will drive people back to smoking because what is the point in giving up? You know, that's what a lot of people will say. They're trying to give up for the benefit of their health, we know, but if they're going to be outside in, in, the, in the rain or the cold, quite frankly, I, I believe they won't give up. Well... Again, we're back to opinion, um, but the point I'm trying to say is that if you demonize these people by, that's maybe too strong a word, by banning them using the e-cigarettes in public, then you're putting them into the category the same as the smokers, yes. and, and the, you should not conflate those two lines of evidence. Right. BMA? The evidence isn't there. BMA? Uh, yeah, I think we need to be careful not to overstate the evidence. When we are discussing the, the evidence that are some piece of evidence we, we do have and we will certainly to share those with, with the committee. For example, we know that um, those who use e-cigarettes as opposed to other types of nicotine replacement therapy are more likely to still identify themselves as smokers and are more likely to dual use their nicotine therapy plus cigarettes. Um, and also in terms of the evidence, whilst all of us on the, on the side, I'm sure we agree, there is a place for e-cigarettes as part of structured smoking cessation programmes, mm. 
the, the, the current evidence, which is, which is up to date as, a, as of publications last week, show that the trial data for e-cigarettes as a nicotine replacement therapy, as a quit aid, are, are equivocal. There's no evidence either way compared to other nicotine replacement um, therapies. Uh, I think it's also important to, to consider what a, a ban in, in, in public places will have. And there's no reason to think that banning the use of e-cigarettes in an enclosed public place will interfere with the use of e-cigarettes as um, a quit tool. Um, it's, it's relatively easy to cut down the number of cigarettes you smoke, to quite a low number, in fact. It's then very difficult to get from that sort of five or six cigarettes a day to four to three to none. And that's to do with the half-life of nicotine. So you don't need to be using your e-cigarettes all the time. You can quite easily go out f for an evening and have had your nicotine fix before and have your nicotine fix after without it interfering your enjoyment of that public space. And I think with that combined with the fact that th these individuals tend to identify still as smokers, perhaps it means that the idea of them going outside to be with other smokers is not too far away from, from something that people would want to do, perhaps. Um, I, I'm not convinced that a ban in enclosed public places will push people away from e-cigarettes and back to cigarettes.